Hello, welcome to another video. We'll be taking the limit of this expression, but there's something weird and awkward about it. But it's not, if we understand the whole picture of what, what's going on. Now, remember, as I often say when you take limits, if where you're going is a finite number, the first move you want to make is plug in this number. So if you plug in this number here, and you have zero here, this is going to be sine 3 squared, which gives us sine 9, minus sine 9, that gives us zero on top, and this will be zero. So you have a zero over zero situation. And once that happens, it's an indeterminate form. And if you're allowed to use L'Hopital's rule, you differentiate the top, differentiate the bottom, and you try to plug in x equals zero again, you'll somehow eventually get your answer. If it doesn't work the first time, do L'Hopital's rule again, you get your answer. But most often, this kind of question shows up when L'Hopital's rule is not in the picture. And that's the approach that I want you to take for this problem. If there is no L'Hopital's rule uh, allowed, what would you do? It's not much of algebraic manipulation, it is you recognizing the definition of the derivative. Now remember there are two definitions depending on what you're looking for. If you're looking for a general formula, a function representing the derivative of a function, let me explain that. If I told you y equals x squared, then the derivative of y will be 2x. You can see that this is a function. But if I say, what is the derivative of this function when x equals 1? Then it means you have to plug in 1 here, and then you get 2 times 1, which gives you 2. Now, there's another formula you need to know, which I often don't use, which is when the point is specified, you have to use that formula because I can see that the point is specified. This has been substituted. There's a number here. Generally, you don't get these numbers when you're taking the derivative of a function. So, look at this. We have two definitions. Definition 1, okay? The first definition is that f prime of x is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. It is quite obvious that that is not what's going on here because usually you get f of x here, but here we don't have f of x. We actually have a value here. We have a number here. It means this is not the first definition. The second definition, definition two, is that you are not just looking for f prime of x, you're looking for f prime of x at a particular or a given number. So let's say the value is a. Well, the definition of this derivative is the limit as... Now, I'm going to not use x this time. I'm going to use theta, okay? I'm going to say as theta, so it looks different from this, approaches as theta approaches the given number a of f of theta minus f of a over theta minus a. You can see in this case you have a different, slightly different definition. It looks like theta minus a has replaced h and theta has replaced x plus h. We need to employ that because a, a point has been given. The point is A. So what kind of substitution can we do here so that we can use it to answer this? We have to replace X with something like this. We have to replace this with this. Oh, let's do that substitution. So here I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say let theta be equal to 3 plus x. What else can I substitute? 
Oh, then it means RA because you see it looks like this has been, and I know this is a square. Look, I know this is a square, so this thing here has been squared because f of x is a square, so this is, I have a equals 3, I also have a is equal to 3. So I can rewrite this expression this way. This now can be written as the limit. Now watch, as x goes to 0, what do you think is happening? If x approaches 0, then theta approaches 3, right? So, limit as theta approaches 3, which now looks like this. Theta approaches A of f of theta, which is going to be f of theta. But we know the function is sine, so it's going to be sine of theta squared minus the sine of f of a, the function is the square, which is sine of 3 squared. You see that? Divided by theta minus 3. Theta minus 3, because our a is 3, and you can always see that when you replace x in this function, you move 3 over here, it's going to be theta minus 3. So we have seen that this is what we're talking about in this case. So what does this mean? This means Find the derivative of this function and plug in 3 after you get the derivative. Okay? Find the derivative of this function and plug in 3 when you're done. Okay. Now, can we just take the derivative by using the chain rule? Well, if you haven't learned how to use the chain rule because you've not been taught the um, all the integration differentiation techniques, then it means you have to use the definition of the derivative, the first definition, to first find the derivative and then plug in 3 at the end of the day. So this, this implies, this means f of theta equals sine theta squared and f prime of theta evaluated at theta equals 3. So clearly if you can differentiate this or find the derivative of this function and you plug in 3 after getting the derivative you're good. So what we're going to do is just differentiate this and plug in theta equals 3. So we know that f of, a, f of theta equals sine theta squared so f prime of theta will be equal to, what's the derivative of this? Using the chain rule, it's going to be cosine theta squared multiplied by the derivative of the inside, which is going to be 2 theta. Okay, so our answer is going to be 2 theta cosine theta squared. Okay, if we evaluate this when theta is equal to 3, we're going to get 2 times 3 multiplied by the cosine of 3 squared, which is equal to 6 cosine 9. That is the limit of this function. If you could have used L'Hopital's rule from the beginning, then that would be very fast. So L'Hopital's rule appears to be um, the speediest method to do this, but in case you've, you're not allowed or you don't even know what L'Hopital's rule is, it means you cannot use it. You have to navigate through this, rewrite it, and understand this. And I think I recommend you going through this whole thing to get your answer this way rather than use L'Hopital's rule. See you in the next video. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.